Well, this is going to be a really busy week because it seems as if there will be a vote on impeachment this Wednesday. Democrats have basically called on Mike Pence to uh, utilize the 25th Amendment to forcibly remove Donald Trump since he's mentally unfit to serve. And seeing that Pence is not going to do that because I don't think he uh, has the spine to do such a thing, then uh, it looks like impeachment is going to be the route that Democrats pursue to hold Donald Trump accountable for inciting an insurrection. Now, I think that the 25th Amendment is something that should be utilized. It probably is a little bit too late because it's much more complicated than actually just impeaching him. But I mean, if, if we have the 25th Amendment that allows us, you know, gives us this mechanism to remove a president that's unfit to serve, if we don't use that on Donald Trump, then what's the point of even having it? Because he very clearly meets the criteria of being unfit to serve. But having said that, though, impeachment is the route that Democrats are likely going to be uh, pursuing, and progressives are clashing behind the scenes with House leadership, Democratic leadership, that is, because the way that they're going about this, they're kind of stalling unnecessarily so. And if you're going to impeach him, you got you got to move fast because time's ticking. He's got, you know, less than two weeks in office. Uh, so Common Dreams breaks all of this down. This is from Jake Johnson, who explains progressives late Sunday voiced growing frustration with what they perceive as dangerous foot dragging by the Democratic leadership after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi laid out a plan of action for the coming week that will likely push off an impeachment vote until Wednesday, a full week after a violent mob incited by President Donald Trump. Trump attacked the U.S. Capitol. We are calling on the vice president to respond within 24 hours, Pelosi said. If Pence doesn't take action, and he's given no indication that he will as cabinet secretaries begin jumping ship, only then will the House move forward with articles of impeachment against the president for his role in encouraging the mob that stormed the Capitol in a failed attempt to stop the certification of president-elect Joe Biden's victory. If the House votes to impeach Trump for the second time, it is far from clear when a trial would begin in the Senate, which is still controlled by by Republicans ahead of the swearing in of Democratic senators elect Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff of Georgia. A two thirds majority is required to convict. As the New York Times reported, House Majority Whip Jim Clyburn on Sunday argued in favor of delaying the start of any Senate trial for several months to allow Biden to take office without the cloud of an all consuming impeachment drama. Let's give President elect Biden the 100 days he needs to get his agenda off and running, Clyburn said in an appearance on CNN. Clyburn's comments provided evoked widespread frustration among Democrats, the Washington Post reported, citing unnamed aides and lawmakers. They worried that Clyburn's remarks would undermine the party's case for Trump's quick removal, that he is an immediate danger to the nation. And I tend to agree with that last line there. It seems like a contradiction. If you're saying we've got to act quickly and he's an immediate danger, then stalling his removal, which would come if the Senate votes to convict, it doesn't really make sense. Like, you're kind of like your own worst enemy in here if you genuinely believe that Trump does need to be removed. Um, now, I want to address something. I, I think a lot of people, rightfully so, think this is so pointless because he's going to be out of power in a couple of weeks. Is it really necessary to focus so much time and energy on impeaching a president that's already been impeached, even if, you know, again, he's unlikely to be convicted? And to that, I'm going to play a video from Bernie Sanders who explains why this is still important if, uh, even if, you know, it's going to largely amount to not much. Uh, we will talk about that. I want to talk about the current issue right now, impeachment. You tweeted on January 8th. Some people ask, why would you impeach and convict a president who has only a few days left in office? The answer, precedent. It must be made clear that no president now or in the future can lead an insurrection against the U.S. government. I take it that means that if, uh, if, if the impeachment gets to uh, a Senate trial, you will support impeaching the president of the United States? Yeah, I will. You know, and again, people say, well, why are you wasting your time? Why are you doing this? You know, Trump has a week left. Isn't it stupid? And the answer is no, it is not. The word has got to go out, not just for this president, but for future presidents, that we have a constitution, we have a rule of rules of law in this country, and you cannot aid and abet an insurrection and not be impeached. So I think from a precedent point of view, uh, going forward and impeaching Trump, uh, is the right thing to do. So let's talk about it from a practical point of view. It does look like the House can get this done possibly this week. Uh, J uh, Mitch McConnell says an impeachment trial could not begin in the Senate until January 19th. January 20th is the inauguration. You're a guy who actually understands parliamentary procedure because you engaged in it, I think, about two weeks ago with respect to these relief checks. Uh, how do you understand this from a process perspective? 
My understanding is Mitch McConnell does not want to do it. Uh, if he had the will to do it, uh, it could be done. We would have to accelerate normal processes. Uh, but if uh, Lena McConnell wanted to do it, uh, it certainly could be done. And in my view, uh, it should be done. So I think that Bernie Sanders is totally right here. He's totally right. And this is about holding people accountable. If you are a leftist and you don't like the fact that we functionally live in a two-tier justice system where poor people get, you know, uh, jailed for doing what elites get away with, then you have to remain principled and expect that the president should be held accountable. Like, it doesn't matter that there's a couple of weeks left. If you incite an insurrection, it doesn't matter if you've got a day left. There should be accountability because if there is accountability for us, then there should be accountability for the president of the United States. I mean, if you were working at Taco Bell and you put in your two weeks notice and you had a week left and you ransacked the place and you like stole money from the cash register, do you think that your managers would just like let you continue working there and think, oh, well, you know, you only got a week left? No, there would be consequences. If you stole enough money, they would press charges against you. They would fire you and you, uh, you know, you wouldn't be able to get a job there. They wouldn't give you a recommendation. Like there are consequences to our actions. So we can't just excuse Donald Trump's behavior because, you know, time is running out for him. I think that that's not a very consistent thing to advocate for if you genuinely want justice to be applied universally, you know, and to be uh, blind, so to speak, blind justice. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, black or white, it should be applied evenly. And even if that's not the reality in America, oftentimes, uh, I'm going to push to make sure that we fight for consistency and that we hold rich people accountable. Now, I do think there is a legitimate concern here that this could be a distraction, right? We are at an unprecedented time. Like we're, we're basically witnessing a great depression. There's a global pandemic. Is this really what lawmakers should be focusing their time on? And to that, I say, we don't have to choose. Like that's kind of a false psychotomy. It's not like we can only choose to focus on impeachment. And if we choose impeachment, then we can't focus on a stimulus or healthcare. We can walk and chew gum at the same time. We could do multiple things at once. We can both focus on impeachment but also we can make sure that people get what they need. So I just feel like, you know, there's there's more than enough evidence to suggest that Donald Trump literally incited a riot. If, if you think that he's not responsible, that we can't draw a line between point A and B, you know, him inciting a riot and the riot happening, then I, I think that you're being pretty naive. So of course, if he did this, then I expect him to be held accountable. It's about accountability. If you let him off the hook, then what does that say for future administrations? Like, this is why I wanted Obama to prosecute George W. Bush for war crimes. And I was mad when he didn't. Like, I felt betrayed immediately. Because if we allow, a, you know, a presidential administration to get away with torture and committing war crimes, then future administrations are going to do the same thing. And guess what? That's happening. So look, accountability, it hasn't been a thing we've seen when it comes to people in power in America, but you've got to start somewhere. And I'm not going to allow members of Congress to abdicate their duty. If Trump broke the law, hold him accountable. If that means impeaching him, you've got to do that. Mike is a total loser. So don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.